So the purpose of this video is kind of to go over how you would integrate Jenkins and Ansible playbooks uh, to configure and in your infrastructure in your IT environment. So say maybe you've got a GitHub or a GitLab repository, right? And you've got some Ansible roles configured in it. And each one of those roles is different things. And you use GitHub or GitLab as your central repository where you store those configuration settings for your infrastructure. Anytime someone makes maybe a change to the NTP configuration or the message of the day, uh, you want that change to be distributed to all the machines in your Ansible inventory the moment it's pushed. Or if you have a pipeline, you want, ideally you want it to be pushed uh, and then some actions to be taken such as QA to be notified, QA to review it, QA to uh, accept that code change and then for it to be pushed, right? So we're not gonna make a Jenkins pipeline, we're just gonna make a build that when you make a change, so I, if I do a git push to the message of the day here, right, it then triggers Jenkins to run the Ansible playbook and update that inventory with the change that was pushed uh, to GitHub. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go up here to our avatar on the top, right? We need to go down to settings. We need to go to developer settings and we need to create a personal access token. And we're going to call it Jenkins. You can call it whatever you want, but this makes sense. Uh, and we're going to, we need to give it admin repo hook uh, rights, right? Uh, because we're going to be using web hooks. And it's going to spit out this secret string here. We need to copy this string. And we need to go back to our Jenkins server, which I have running on a Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8 system on my private home lab. You can see by the address. And this is going to cause some issues later, but we'll go over how to get around those. And what I want to do first is I want to manage Jenkins. I want to go to configure system. And there's a couple things we need to take care of, but first we need to uh, create our uh, GitHub credentials using that secret access token that was generated. So you want to go down to GitHub uh, and you want to go down right here where it says GitHub, GitHub servers, and you want to add a GitHub server. And you just want to call it GitHub. You can use any API or sorry, any name you want. And you want to leave API github.com as the default API URL. Uh, you want to go ahead and add a credential. Uh, you want to change this to secret text. It's always going to show up username and password at first. Secret text. You want to paste that secret access token we got over here from GitHub earlier. You want to give it an ID, something intuitive. So I'm going to name it GitHub Jenkins. Jenkins. We're going to add. And then our credentials, we're going to select that credential we just created. And you want to ensure you click manage hooks. If you don't click manage hooks, this will not work. You want to go ahead and test connection. There it says credentials verified for my GitHub username. And we're going to go, on, go ahead and save. So that we've configured the GitHub access token globally within Jenkins. So we don't have to configure it on every project individually. So now we want to go ahead and make a new project. So we'll go to new item. We'll call it Ansible dash uh, role updates, right? And we'll make it a freestyle project and we'll hit okay. All right, you can add a description if you want, but first we wanna make sure GitHub project is selected. And then we wanna go over to GitHub and we wanna go over to our repositories and the repository that we want to make sure Jenkins is watching for updates, we need to grab that URL. So I'm going to go ahead and grab it. I'm going to paste it in the project URL box. For source code management, I need to choose Git. I need to take my uh, repository URL again and paste it here. Uh, we don't need to choose credentials because we configured those globally earlier in the configure in the system configuration. You want to leave this all uh, default master branch. Uh, we need to choose a build trigger. We're going to choose GitHub <clears throat> hook trigger for Git SCM polling. And what this does is anytime uh, GitHub recognizes a change to this repository here, 
it's going to notify Jenkins and Jenkins is going to do a git pull. You can do git pull SCM, which is basically setting up a cron job uh, for Jenkins to pull git uh, periodically. Uh, in many ways, the skin and cat. Um, and then we do need to add a build step to run the Ansible playbook, but there's one thing I need first. I'm going to go ahead and save and I'm just going to build now. And this is going to fail. See, there we go. All right. And we're going to go to console output. And because I didn't have a build step, all Jenkins did was clone the remote repository. But I did this because I needed to know where it cloned the repository to so I can successfully build, build the run script that needs to happen whenever for Ansible to run, right? So I know this is my workspace now var lib Jenkins workspace Ansible role updates, right? So what I want to do is I want to go back to my project and I want to go back to configure. I want to scroll all the way down and I want to add a build step. I want to execute shell and we want to enter a command uh, called Ansible dash playbook, uh, similar to if we were running an ad hoc command on the command line of the machine itself and dash I, and we want to define the inventory. Now we know that Jenkins has copied the repository into this folder here, right? So if I take, if I go onto my machine here, let's log in, and this is my Jenkins server, and I cd into var lib Jenkins oh, var Lib Jenkins workspace Ansible role updates, right? This is the directory structure. It mirrors the directory structure of my GitHub repo over here. So I know that my hosts file from the repo right here is in this directory as host file. So then it follows that we would know that playbooks configure, what's the name of this playbook right here? Configure systems.yaml. Would also follow the directory structure. And then we're gonna go ahead and hit save. And I'm gonna build now. And it's important that I point out that um, you're going to want to make sure that in your GitHub repository, your Ansible.cfg is configured with a user. So I have user Jenkins on the machine. So I'm running this job actually on the Jenkins server as the user Jenkins. And the Jenkins user is not prompt. It's not using a password and it has pseudo permissions. So it's not going to be prompt for a password when I attempt to uh, SSH in as Jenkins. Uh, because I have uh, SSH keys set up. And if I go to console output, I can see that it did the git pull and then it ran the shell script that we wanted to execute, which was the Ansible playbook dash I against the host inventory using the configure systems playbook. So it gathered, it gathered facts, it called the roles, it called the uh, MOTD role because I have the others commented out and it configured this system. So now let's say, let's go make a change, right? Because we said we wanted anytime we made a git push to our repository, we wanted Jenkins to then apply that change to our host here. Uh, and this host right here, uh, so you can say I'm not lying to you is you know, 192.168.56.143 is my Jenkins server here. 192.168.56.143. Um, let's go to roles. Let's go to MOTD. Let's go to files. Uh, MOTD judge HU. And let's, let's edit this here. So let's say, hello world. And let's commit, right? So now that I've made the commit, uh, 
it should update, right? Well, no. Um, if I had DNS, uh, public DNS or public IP address, then yes, if it would update. But because I'm in a home lab behind a uh, using a private IP address behind a firewall being natted, you'll notice there's an issue here. There were some problems while registering or removing one of more GitHub webhooks. Would you like to view the problems? So we'll go ahead and view. It says it failed to create a hook, right? And this is because I'm behind, I'm being natted behind a firewall. So there's a way around this. So we have this website here, uh, SME.io. And what's happening here is I've, I've made up this little diagram at PowerPoint here. Is GitHub's trying to talk to Jenkins anytime we commit, uh, but GitHub's saying, I don't know how to reach Jenkins. And Jenkins is like, I, I never knew there was a change. So what this SME.io is going to do is we have a webhook emitter, which is GitHub. SME.io sits in the middle in our local host, which is Jenkins. And we're going to have the client on Jenkins constantly reaching out, uh, subscribing to the SME.io. So when, and then GitHub will notify SME.io when there's a change. And because Jenkins is subscribing, is reaching out, right? Because of the NAT gateway, an inbound connection can't come in but Jenkins can make an outbound connection. So Jenkins is making outbound, get to the uh, SME.io, GitHub is, is talking to SME.io, change happens, GitHub has says, hey, SME.io, there was a commit. Jenkins is subscribed to that, so it then knows there was a commit and it can uh, then reach out and run the job. So, Back to Jenkins, right? Uh, actually, we don't need to do anything with Jenkins. If you go to SME.io, you start a new channel. Uh, you'll be given this uh, proxy URL here. Um, and what we need to do um, is we need to take this proxy URL. We need to go over here to GitHub. Uh, oh, this is Jenkins. We need to go over here to GitHub. And in our repository, right, we need to go to settings for that repository. We need to go webhooks. We need to add a webhook. And we're going to paste that SME.io web proxy URL here that we were given. We're going to choose application JSON. We're going to send everything. We're going to add a webhook. So then what we need to do over on our Jenkins host machine, right? So I'm logged into the Jenkins host machine here. Is uh, we need to install the JavaScript uh, package manager. So we'll do. I'll do a yum install uh, our npm, and I've already got it installed. So it's going to let me know that it's already installed. But if you don't have it installed, you you need to install this. I go ahead and control L here. Um, and then we need to uh, install the SME class. So we would do install SME, or sorry, npm install dash dash global SME dash client. And this is gonna, once the SME client's uh, installed, we can then set up communication to uh, SME.io, right? Uh, so now we need to start SME client and we need it to point it to the port that the Jenkins server is on. So my Jenkins server is on port 8080 here. So let's go ahead and do a SME dash dash URL and that SME URL we copied. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and have to paste that Let's see here, SME, where are you? Oh, well, it's here in the webhooks, so let me grab it from here. All right. Paste, all right. And then we're gonna need to pass, uh, and the path is gonna be github dash webhook second dash, and then the port that my Jenkins server runs on, which is 8080. And then it says connected, right? 
So now if I do make a change, right? So let's leave that there to this uh, GitHub repository. So let's, let's go to roles. Let's go to, and first let's look at the, let's look at the project here. Oh, where am I? Jenkins. Okay, number two was the last one run. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and go to MOTD, files, MOTD J2. And let's change this to actually let's, so we can verify that the, the change actually took place, right? It's control Z. BG, so we send that process to the background instead of canceling it. And let's cat etsy MOTD. Uh, so it still says Caterpie from the old one. So hello, hello world. All right. And we'll commit changes. So now I've made this commit. Jenkins should see, and it did, see, now we have a job kicking off. And that's how we keep all of our source code for our infrastructure that we want to manage, our settings, in a, a source code management system like Git, and keep it synced with Jenkins. Uh, and anytime we make a commit or a change to GitHub, uh, Jenkins can then run uh, that Ansible script to update our infrastructure.